Welcome to the Digital Marketing Insights Podcast, brought to you by Brightside Digital. Everyone, welcome to the show. I'm delighted to say we have Marie Ryan here today, who's a freelance marketing strategist. How are you doing, Marie? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. How are you today? Yeah, great. Thank you. And yeah, thanks so much for doing the show. Um, Marie, can we start off by you telling everyone a little bit about yourself and your experience to date, please? Sure. Well, I'm a freelance marketing strategist, so I work with companies to help them with their strategy, of course. Um, I find that a lot of companies have a lot of um, low hanging fruit to, um, to use the cliche, but it's often very applicable and there's a lot of quick wins. So I help them to find the quick wins. Additionally, I train marketing teams. So often companies might have a smaller or um, an inexperienced team. So I work with them to mentor and coach them and to guide them in, into the best marketing practices. Love it. And in terms of your main traffic drivers, what's your main skill set in strategy? What, what do you focus on when you're, you're doing your work? Yeah, so I'm a marketing generalist as opposed to a specialist. So I take um, a full 360 um, overview. Gosh, I'm full of cliches today. I'm sorry. But more specifically, what I do is I do a deep dive into the, the ideal customer, really, and figure out who the ideal customer is, and then I come up with ways to reach them. So things like if somebody's customer is an engineer 50 to 70, they're going to be on different platforms and they're going to want different content than, say, 25 year old women that spend a lot of time on Instagram, for example. So that would be one thing. Um, a way that I find useful will be by speaking to people. So oftentimes the CEO um, will have a lot of insights, but so will the customer success and the sales team, as well as the marketing teams as well. They often don't speak to each other as much as they should, but even say a 30 minute conversation with different people on different teams will unlock a lot of insights. Beyond that, I have a look at the analytics and you can have a look at the behavior and figure out um, a bit more about the customers themselves and also having a look at how those people interact with the website and their social media. And it all gives a, a realistic picture of the customer, which helps to frame the strategy. Brilliant. So let's break that down a little bit. So in terms of touch and base with the CEO and the sales team and things like that. Is there a set list of questions that you refer to? How, how do you go about um, analyzing that particular data from word of mouth? Yeah, so I take a qualitative approach as opposed to maybe a survey approach. Um, it's literally just speaking to people to get their insights. Um, I generally wouldn't have a set list of questions. I have an idea. But I like it sometimes when the conversations flow and then you'll get insights that you wouldn't get ordinarily. So it's nice when conversations, I think, veer on to other things. So salespeople might say things like, we find that the strongest feature is, and then asking a pain point or what problem it solves is usually a great way to figure out the hook of the problem that the the company solves because that's ultimately what people are doing when they buy any product they're typically using it to solve a problem so speaking to the sales people will unlock those insights then ceos would of course have a very different view um, typically they'd have a more holistic um, approach so they'd want different customers more generally but i find the sales people actually give the best well, next to marketing of course uh, but I find the salespeople give the best insights because they speak to people um, directly and they understand the pain points the best because they're speaking to people on the phone um, every day. Brilliant. And you mentioned the analytics there as well. So what analytics do you prefer and what's your go-to insights that you think really gives you an idea around the customer? Yeah, so it depends on the goals, the metrics, and it varies from company to company. But actually, one thing that I found um, is a really good marketing strategy, if you have, say, a limited budget or a limited team, will be looking at the top performing content. So if you have a look at which 10 pages perform the best, that will give you a very good insight into what are the traffic drivers to your website and also the things that your customers are more interested in. 
So if you find that the top performing piece of content is top 10 gripes that engineers have, for example, um, you can use that to, to create other content. So that might be a really good video. It could be a good topic for a webinar. It might be worth refreshing that or fleshing it out. Top 10 gripes 2023, top 10 gripes this decade. So you're often not reinventing the wheel, but you can create related content to that one piece of content. And as I say, the top 10 most, the top 10 best performers uh, are usually great insights. Within that, I found that there's always one to three pages that outperform the rest. For example, I once worked with a company where one page was generating 90% of the traffic. We had a lot of really good wins by creating pages related to that, um, a couple of webinars, and it looked like we were reinventing the wheel, but we really weren't. We were just leveraging the existing content and creating more of it. It's a really good example of, of how it all works as well. And uh, data types, I guess in Google Analytics is a staple for most of these businesses that you get involved with. Um, is there any other analytic companies that you you like when you see a business using them? Um, I am a huge fan of SEMrush. Um, they're, they're worth every penny. Um, they're just fantastic for insights into SEO in general for a company itself. And they're also really useful for competitor awareness. So you'll often hear people talking about competitors this and competitors that. They're probably not going to put their main strategy on the main page and make it easy for you. But if you look at things um, like what keywords they're going after, that's really useful as well. So to give you another example, one company that I worked with previously, they ha one of their competitors had 30% of their traffic going to one page and we didn't have a page like it at all. So we used that key term and we created our own very unique content on that topic. And that quickly became a top performing page on that website. And it's not something we would ever have known about had we not invested in SEMrush and on one day just had a look at um, competitors to find out what they were doing. So that's, I found really, really useful. Really good example. and. Uh, campaign work you've given a good example there but is there any campaign that you really go into or project with a company that you're really proud of that you made really successful so i take a holistic approach i'd never really do a campaign just for the sake of it it's all like um i create content and from that i might create a webinar and a social media campaign and an email marketing campaign around it so they're all very interlinked um, i'm proud of all of them I suppose the biggest project that I did that I'm proud of is a web project. Um, I don't do that very often. And I worked with a very good agency to create a technical website for a technical company in a technical area. And the website was really well received by customers and stakeholders. Um, one of the challenges in that company was that it was so technical that if you visited the site and if you weren't already an expert in the industry, you wouldn't have a clue what they did. <laughs> But by the end of it, it was all so clear that even if you had no connection to the industry, you'd have a fair idea what they did um, just by looking at the um, web, the, the main page, even above the fold. So, so that was something I'm particularly proud of because it's new to me. I like working on new things. But of course, you have the staples. I really enjoy writing content. Um, I especially like writing stuff that's interesting and unique because I think there is a danger or a temptation to write for SEO which means you're writing for Google and Google isn't a particularly good judge of character as such. So um, I prefer writing for people and I think in B2B it needs to be interesting. I think there's a misconception that things need to be really professional, meaning boring, but people buy from people. So I think it's always really important to put a little bit of yourself into things. So that's something that I enjoy doing. When I'm working on a brand and manage to put a bit of personality into things, I'm always really, really proud. Yeah, that's a really good point. And softwares, like you've already mentioned SEMrush, but is there any other softwares you use when you're doing your content or anything else that you use daily, weekly, and for else? Um, I don't know if we can talk about this, but um, HubSpot. So I've had two experiences with them. Once was where I worked with this 
company and I'd never really used um, marketing automation before. So I had a call with HubSpot and it was the best call I'd ever had. And um, the onboarding was fantastic and it really helped make inbound marketing successful within the company. Um, I had a call with them a second time working on a different project and the veil was just lifted. Um, they're incredible, but I think the price that you pay isn't really worth it for, say, small to medium sized enterprises. You can get as good or near as good a service from other companies at a fraction of the price. It wouldn't have the bells and whistles and it wouldn't sound as fantastic. But I think for what you need, you don't necessarily need to invest in a big platform um, like HubSpot or indeed like any of the other really big players. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, my, my experience with HubSpot is exactly that as well. They're very good at what they do, just uh, pricing. And a lot of the time you have to unlock more premium packages, the different hubs, just to just to do what you want to do next, especially around automation. Um, but away from them for a second, is there any areas that you are looking to upskill into a little bit more, Marie? Is there anything that's catching your eye? Yeah, um, this was not to be too meta, but podcasting. Um, I've seen what it can do in terms of business transformation. And as I say, building a brand and adding some personality. So that's something that I'm focused on for myself and then for my own business and also for other companies. Because like that, I think people have a lot of things to say, but they don't necessarily know how to say it. And I do think that um, speaking about a topic is easier for a lot of people than maybe blogging. So it's one of those things that I think if they had someone to help them and guide them to set it up and to talk them through the process, I think that would make it a lot easier for people to start a presence with podcasting or video. And then that would, of course, make it easier for, for prospects, for customers, for people who are interested in buying the product or service. Because like that, I think trust is the most important thing. And like that, if people can see you or hear you, I think they're more inclined to either want to do business with you or even on the other hand to know actually you know what this definitely isn't for me and if they do that that certainly makes things easier because you've saved a sales call and you've saved you've saved everybody's time really well said and new insights which has led into that is is there anywhere where you go for for new insights information obviously you're probably training yourself up in podcasting but is there anywhere you go to learn these things? No, um, I tend to, well, I'm on LinkedIn a lot. Um, there's a lot of really great insights now. And um, particularly these days, I find it's growing all the time and you can get so much uh, insights fairly easily. So that would be one thing. Um, I do follow Neil Patel from now and, uh, now and then. I think um, he's interesting. Um, he has a lot of insights. I don't necessarily agree with all of them, but I think they're certainly interesting to read. Beyond that, I like to keep up with things by doing courses, but I'm very much on a, on a needs basis. I'll upskill and learn new things rather than maybe um, following the latest trend all the time. And we'll, we'll talk about podcasting for a second, though, because you've already mentioned you see it as a big opportunity and a great place for a business. Um, where what do you see as the biggest opportunity in podcasting at the moment how how do you see that market going i think the biggest opportunity for podcasts is what you can turn that into so if you record one 30 minute podcast and say get the transcript you can turn that into a blog very easily all the information is there you could turn it into a series of videos and potentially build a youtube channel or use it on social media so one piece of content that didn't take you very long is suddenly a hub of extra opportunities for content. So that I think is huge. Uh, the second thing is I think it's a great opportunity for people to build their own expertise as well as sharing others. So like that, if there's a topic you're interested in, but you don't necessarily know a lot about, you can invite someone who is an expert. And in that sense, you're educating yourself, but you're also educating your audience in something that they might be interested in. So I think podcasts are, well, they're obviously huge as it is, but I think they'll only grow um, in the next few years. Really well said. And Marie, um, 
have you noticed the difference in YouTube now? They're really making a big play in podcasting as well. So I don't know if this is an involvement of where the market's going, but to back up what you're saying about creating content and obviously building your brand and putting a, a face to a lot of it. Um, do you think video podcasting could be a big play for businesses listening and would be something that you potentially recommend when you're working with them? Yes, definitely. If you're going to record something on audio, you may as well record it on video as well. I actually think that um, YouTube is an untapped market for B2B companies. Um, very, very few business to business companies have YouTube channels. It's nearly easier for them to have a podcast channel than a YouTube channel. But video is where everybody goes to learn, I think. So for most businesses, uh, B2B in most industries, if you start creating even a few YouTube channels, sorry, a few YouTube videos even, you're likely to push yourself far ahead of your competitors who probably aren't there at all. So for the B2B market, yeah, I think it has untapped potential and it's a really great place for businesses to go, even if they are just starting out. But yeah, and yeah, I see that opportunity there and the evolve, like how AI is evolving right now, the editing, which was such a heavy part of, of podcasting or, or doing video and stuff. There's so much AI now involved in editing that anyone listening, you, you can really develop and, and actually improve your editing. Uh, and, and it's so tight, like it, it saves you so much time now using these softwares. So definitely check it out if it is something you're interested in. Um, Marie, lastly, I, I always ask this question to end the show, which is try, trying to understand the people behind the role. Um, if you could bottle up one personality trait you have yourself that you could pass on to others, what would it be? Resilience. Resilience. I think it's been a key Resilience. component for me anyway. The most important thing in any marketing strategy is consistency. Consistency is key. So people will often spend a lot of time into one post that they think it's going to go viral. Guess what? It doesn't. And then they're back to the drawing board. Um, so there's a lot of procrastination involved. But I think if you had even, say, medium quality content on social media, or if you were working on SEO, if you had a new piece of content every two weeks, um, if you do that consistently, I think you will have a much better result than somebody who would have even like one or two or even five viral campaigns over the course of, course of the year. So I would say consistency. The thing is, with that, it can be difficult to push through when you're not seeing the results right away. Um, for example, with SEO or content or podcasting, um, sometimes it's easy to talk yourself out of it. Whereas if you have that resilience, that's like, well, I said I'm going to do this, so I'm going to do it. And then I'll analyze the results after. Again, I think that's what would make a much better result. And I think that's what separates successful people and successful companies from the ones that don't make it. Yeah, I completely agree with that point. It's there's a little bit of impatience, especially in digital business. If if you have the old traditional sense and brick and mortar, you're a lot more patient when you have a storefront and there's not many people coming in, but you know it's going to build. Whereas digital, because things seem instant, businesses sometimes expect uh, instant results. Whereas, as you mentioned, SEO, like even growing an email database or leads and, and, and things like that, it just takes so much time. It's like, um, it's like going to the gym. You're not going to get results unless you commit and say, okay, we're going to do this for six to 12 months. You know, if, if you do it for two months or, or you get impatient after the first month, um, especially in someone like your role where it's freelance, it's very hard to turn that ship round in a short space of time. You need that commitment for a couple of months anyway to, to prove the results. So I completely echo that. And then on top of that, you have such changes in the industry around Google and then the new social media that everyone's on and everything else that goes in between. Um, you have to build these databases and then you have to almost pick them up and bring them to the next platform or cross market and everything else. So um that's a really good point uh marie that's it uh that's our time up but if anyone wants to reach out to you find you how can they 
Sure. Uh, the best way to find me is on LinkedIn. So if you go into LinkedIn and type, it, type in Marie Ryan, you should find me. Alternatively, you can find my website, wittybanter.com. So that's witty-banter.com. Love it, Marie. Thanks so much for being on the show. And I really enjoyed this. And yeah, I cannot wait to see your next work as well. Um, thank you everyone for watching, listening and everything else. That's great. Thanks for having me.